22 kilometers away from the district headquarter of the commercial hub of Dimapur, Nagaland, in the interior of a village called Shitovi, stands a little school, unknown to the outside world, but a beacon of light to many children. Running this school is Mr. and Mrs. Cynthia Kampungan, a couple teaching the children in the locality free of cost to give them a stepping stone towards a brighter future. It is necessary for, for them to get the education. They deserve, they deserve to, to, go to, to go to school. So if the, we were thinking if the only stumbling block for them not to go to school is the, the fee that they have to pay, then we should remove the stumbling block and we can, they can go. The children in the outskirt village are mostly engaged in farming and fishing, trying to add a little extra hand to help as their parents work hard to survive. Children in places such as this also have dreams for a better future, but education is an option that often comes last. <laughs> I think that is the thing. Especially if there are more children in the family, three, four, five, and the parents cannot afford to pay and to provide the school fees, then it's a big problem for them. And maybe also some parents who themselves uh, didn't get education, they don't see a value of education. As children grow up to begin their journey of life, independent of their parents, different paths are chosen. A few choose education, some continue to assist their parents, but some, unfortunately, turn to child labor. Child labor uh, is when, uh, when you take away the dignity of a child, deprive of their childhood. You know, take them away from parents. Uh, you know, or, or yeah, take away the facilities, uh, making them throw out from the school because of the work that they do, or, or this uh, potentials, you know, that prevent them from going to schools. Poverty is one uh, because of poverty issues. Children are pushed into domestic uh, child labor. The second could be because. Um, the parents are given full promise saying that they will have better life, better education, you know, better lifestyle. And when they hear about all those promises, the parents want their children to have those opportunities which they have not received, so they send the children. The other could be because of lack of facilities or opportunities in the village. The exact number of kids engaged in child labor cannot be ascertained since many organizations and NGOs count them according to their own definition of child labor. However, a data released by the International Labor Organization and UNICEF in 2020 says that there are about 160 million children engaged in child labor. And according to UNICEF, nearly 1 in 10 children are subjected to child labor worldwide. The report of the ILO and UNICEF shows that in four years, about 8.4 million children joined the labor workforce and warns that globally, 9 million additional children are at risk of being pushed into child labor by the end of 2022 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Child labor is more prevalent in rural areas. Data shows that 22% of the global child labor is reported from Asian countries, 32% from Africa, 17% from Latin America, and 1% from the United States, Europe, and other rich countries. India's 2011 census revealed that there are 10.1 million child laborers in the country, where 5.6 million are male and 4.5 million are female, which means one in every 10 child laborer across the world is in India. Child Rights and You, or CRY, has found that India's 33 million children between the age group of 5 and 18 years are working in child dhabas, factories, construction sites, and as domestic helpers. You know, there are so many consequences. If, if a child is not 
uh, you know, if a child is working, which means he's deprived of every uh, facilities or every uh, rights a child should enjoy. Force maturity. When a child is given so much of responsibility, when they are not able to handle the, uh, you know, situations in other ones. So there's a force maturity. We are forcing a child to make decisions. We are forcing a child to work physically, mentally, emotionally. So there's a lot of force that happens on a child. Data shows the number of child laborers in Nagaland increasing through the years. About a decade ago, an official survey revealed that there are over 9,000 child laborers engaged in various works across 11 districts. The state's Department of Labor, while conducting the survey with CECS, found that these children have been engaged in various sectors working for about 16 hours a day, deprived of proper accommodation, food and education. The number of children are really growing. The last survey that was done by NCV was in uh, 2000, uh, 2000, I think, uh, 21. The problem is we don't have a proper data in the we, we are not able to do a proper survey and government should really come forward to do this one. Uh, we don't have proper data on dropout children. We don't have a proper data on, on the child labor. So, and, and, and one uh, bottleneck that we also have in Nagaland is uh, we can't do uh, survey on the domestic child labor. You know, children don't have to work for food and clothes. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, as for the UN Convention of the Rights of the Children, it's free. Children should get access to free food and free clothes, free shelter. But in Naga system, the, the system that we have right now in child labor sector is like, why do we give the children? Because we're giving them food, we're giving them shelter, we're sending them to school. We are expecting government of Nagaland to uh, rectify and also amend, uh, you know, the Child Labor Act. In the context of Nagaland, when we are talking about our Naga children, uh, it did not make uh, much difference, though it has impacted us in different ways. Uh, but the children getting in, in the workforce is comparatively very less, so it's not a big issue. But when we talk about uh, children, migrant, uh, economically deprived families, we see that uh, these children are pushed into these factors. As per the cases that uh, have come to Childline, it has increased. And uh, most of the cases that we dealt with are domestic child labor. They have been abused physically, uh, they are sexually abused, and that's the reason why they keep running away from home, that's the reason why they go missing, that's the reason why they end up calling Child Line 1098 to support them. According to Child Line Dimapur data that was published in June 2021, there were 175 child-related cases, among which 72 cases of abuse. In January 2020, there were reports that say most of the child trafficking victims were domestic workers. Just last year, we have a data in Dimapur itself. We have 164 cases that came for under child abuse in child labor. And most of the, out of 164 cases, most of, the, most of these children are from domestic background, domestic child labor background. As you see, it's just, it's just an iceberg. Only few cases comes to media, or only cases maybe maybe only few cases comes to the NGOs. Our Naga people don't consider this domestic help as child labor, but as per the law, it is child labor. So um, I did a survey for Labor Department a few years back, and uh, I found out that most of these children were being taken by some of the people who were well known to the family members with a promise of giving them some job or give, sending them to the school. The support of the government is, is, is one thing that needs to be there to eradicate the poverty and also the awareness uh, and also educating the parents. Is education the answer? Will it break free the chains of child labor? Perhaps, and that is what many good Samaritans are doing though the ride is not as smooth as it looks. 
education is one of the backbone that can change the mindset because once a child is educated then you can eradicate poverty you know you can listen listen down the burdens of the family parents are also happy and once a child is properly educated then he or she will at least definitely find a way to earn his living in the future as, as an NGO as an organization we have small projects so what do we do is if we have a uh, projects on non-formal education in one area we, we don't need assessment it is very difficult there are lots of NGOs that are also involved in working with children and all that but until unless government intervene or support the any agencies or NGOs to do a proper survey it is it will be very difficult for us to get involved and collect all these informations the parents approach us first mm. so we went around to all these uh, family members uh, it took us one one year to to get to know them in your work he Pachagando first we started in this uh, common room and then after that there were one in the outside veranda and one here and one on the other room in, in their room for night start for our school in the honey and even those children who, because we just have the like small grades, A, B, and 1, or 2, so if they go to other school afterwards, they're doing very well. So we always hear, even from the parents, that my child is, is doing very well in that other school. So it means we gave a good foundation. If the line department, for example, the education department, uh, as per the RTE, provides uh, free and compulsory education and no charge, you know, some minimum annual charges, but provide free education, provide proper midday meal to the children. If Angangwadi workers work sincerely uh, on a regular basis, if they open and provide nutrition on a daily basis, that could also uh, decrease. If the church and the community come forward together to, you know, sponsor or look after children who really need to go to schools, I mean, who really wanted to go to schools, but because of the economic or financial position at home, they are not able to, then, uh, the, you know, the church can come together and then support this kind of children. The, the teachers, the student union, or the community leaders, if they can come together and you know, like um, apply for sponsorship uh, or scholarships, there are lots of schemes uh, under scholarships, you know, sponsorships by different departments. So if they can come and then you know help those children, definitely it could help them financially. It could help in education. It could. We need to have lots of awareness. People need to be educated on the rights of the children. People need to be educated on the consequences of keeping a child at home. As a Christian, lastly, my message to everyone is, you can't really love someone if you don't have the experience of God's love. It's very difficult. And if you can't really love someone, how can you love someone's child? Society, I'm not so picky load me like now. Pachakan hard labor, they are so I in Gadan no Borivina. Aro, it do society bra quishule, no le ectuman, right? It do step forward for in a quishule. I think they will also be stopping. If all the people just agree that the child is valued, then doesn't matter what to, what religion we are, we have to stand together as a community. And if we see something, we have to address it and to name things straightforward. Throughout the history of mankind, the active contribution of children in daily activities has always been a necessity. But with the dawn of the modern age, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, the works that children engage in drastically changed which impelled the society to differentiate between child-friendly works and child labour. While creating awareness can be a leading edge to pave the way for children towards a brighter future, education could prove to be the doorway to Alpas.